Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. And welcome back, everyone. We talked about addiction last time we got together with her, and we're going to spearhead off of that. What is what is addiction? It's something that somebody does addicted to to cope with life. We're going to look at coping skills today and how energy work can support that. And she does that work, all different types, all different modalities. And she's our professional of the year for it. Heather Lena is back with us. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you today? Real well. Such an important topic. And even if you're not addicted, upping your coping skills for anxiety, stress, and all of that, so important. I'm yeah. interested to see how this connects to energy work. So I'm going to use myself as an example, and this is why it's coming up. So um, yesterday I had a really hard day. I may start to cry. I had to make a decision that I didn't like to make, but I did it anyway because it was important. Okay. And so with that, I came to the realization that my coping skills were not doing well yesterday. Mm. What I wanted to do was I wanted to go get a Diet Coke. I wanted to eat a lot of sugar. I wanted to deal with all of this. So what I did instead was I went up and I started working on myself and dealing with it in an energy standpoint, right? So what was it that was making me uncopable and not able to cope with what was going on? And why was I turning to sugar and wanting to go back to my addiction, which we talked about last time, which was Diet Coke, right? Well, it's because I was overstressed. I was overstimulated and I was trying to internalize and keep in all of this emotion, right? So what energy work does, what it does is it will go in and it releases all of this emotion, all of this stuff that you're hanging on to, right? All of this, we go in, we release it. Now, mind you, I'm still working through this right? But today I'm not nearly as craving sugar. I'm not nearly as craving diet Coke. And that's because I went in last night and I did a bunch of work around this issue because it was a trigger for me. It was a trigger for me. I'm sorry but, that, that you had to, to deal with that. And, and that's okay because you know what? It's a growth opportunity and it's something that I needed to do and deal with. But this is what happens to all of us. I don't care who you are, right? You have to deal with things that you don't want to deal with. And so what do we do? We go, we turn to things that help us cope with what we need to do, right? My phone just went ding, like, yes, yeah, agreed, right? <laughs> it's like ring, ring the bell, <laughs> ring the Heather bell. <laughs> and so uh. what we need to understand is in healing work, what we do is we go in and we figure out what it is that is causing you to be so emotional and not be able to cope with whatever is going on, right? And release it, let it go, let's replace it, let's get it out. And don't, for the love of God, don't internalize it because as we internalize it and we, we are holding on to it, right? So we are holding on to this. And when we hold on to this, it doesn't do us any good. And then we get our anxiety, we get our stress. And the more that we internalize and try, people will say, well, I'm just coping right now. Well, stop coping. Let's start working on your healing process, right? Because hmm. if you're just coping, you're going to turn to things that you don't need to be turning to. Sugar and Diet Coke are the ones for me, right? Food, food for me. Food is a stress reliever for me. And so is shopping. Sure. <laughs> I, I'm addicted to shopping. I love to shop. And when I am stressed or if I'm unable to cope, I will go out and spend tons of money shopping. But is that really healthy for me? No. What I really should be doing is just working through whatever it is that I need to work through healing wise so that I move forward and not continue to internalize. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, 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 I believe me. If you saw my Amazon account, you, I, I'm right there with you. And, and I want to share. I want to go deep into your story in a moment. But le just last night, I was with someone who I'm close to, um, has a lot of anxiety, has been going through a lot, and we went out to dinner, and we left dinner, 
and we went to the chocolate shop next door. So she buys a bunch of chocolate. She doesn't really eat a lot of sweets. <laughs> and of course, I got sucked into this. So <laughs> now we're heading back and we're at a, she goes, why are you making that turn? I'm like, because there's a light here and it's easy to go that way. She goes, oh, um, let's go to Carvel ice cream. Oh I'm like, <laughs> are you serious? And that's exactly what she was yeah. doing. So she had a full Sunday and you know, there's yeah. been times before where I suggested once, you know, in a, in six months, Hey, why don't we, you know, get an ice cream? She's like, ah, I don't know if I want to, she's right full on from the chocolate yeah. to the, in a span, I'm talking of, of, of 30 minutes. So yeah. that's, that's her way yeah. of coping, like reckless abandon. And then she got home and had donuts. Not kidding. And she's <laughs> she's not heavy. She's like, she doesn't eat this stuff. But to, to illustrate your point, so I want to go to no specifics, decision you needed to make. Mm -hmm. But did that trigger something in you? And that's why that you needed to, a couple to, to of things. somehow so, cope. So being a cancer, I am very, very um, loving, right? So, because because my one of my signs, one of my signs is cancer. So, oh, um, oh whoa, whoa, whoa! So is my friend. Please continue. <laughs> yeah, make it we up. Should be. We'd get along great, right? <laughs> right? And so, I am. I am one of these people. I'm very soft hearted, and so the decision I had to make was affecting uh, something that was going to require that. Okay, so let me let me clear cancel all that babble. Start over. I have a goal that I'm working on, right? And that goal, um, we started this goal like three months ago. Well, this this thing, this decision that I had to make yesterday affected one of the parts of that goal. Okay. And I'm not going to get into specific any real to. specific details, sure. but in order for my plan and my goal to work and be more sufficient, uh, it was, it just required me to make this hard decision. I'm just going to say to have to get rid of some animals that I'd had for three months that were not working for me. Okay. Yep. yep. And so because of that, it's like, well, I really don't want to get rid of them, but I don't have a choice, right? Because they are hindering what I need them. I, they're hindering my progress here of what I, of what I need to do. And so for me, it was like, oh my God, but because I'm like a huge animal lover, you know, it's like, you know, I love animals, but on the flip side, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to lose you. But on the flip side of that, I've got to make a decision as to whether or not you are beneficial for what I'm trying to do. And you're not. <laughs> I, I'm not psychic okay. and don't claim to be. I'm going to tell you right now, I was feeling it involved an animal. I'm, yeah. not, oh, I'm not even, I'm not even kidding. Absolutely. Uh, and it doesn't, it, it could be involving a uh, human in a relationship. Yes. If it's holding you back from something, it's not supporting you. Well, I had the same problem when I brought my dad back home. Right. So I had always said that, you know, I understand that he was, when I brought him back home, he was coming home to die. And I knew that, but when we found out he was in stage four can uh, kidney failure, I was like, oh my God, I don't want you to go, right? So it was the same type of feeling that I had yesterday letting go of these four animals. But it was like, it's like, but you have to do what's best for whatever it is that you're working on, mm. if that makes sense. Sure. So for my dad, it was best for him to not put him through the kidney dialysis, to just let him go through the process and go. In this particular case, it's going to be more beneficial for what I'm being told I need to do. But this was a test for me. Honestly, this was a test to see number one, if I would do it, because sometimes we have to make those hard decisions in order to benefit and move forward. Right. So you can make this hard decision or you can continue to work status quo and continue to have to deal with the same stuff that you're dealing with. Yep. And so, you know, you had, I had to make a decision. We had to make a decision and the decision was we had to let him go. And as much as it killed me, I let him go. Now to that end yesterday though, I was like, Oh my God, what am I doing? So what did I do? I internalized it all and I blamed myself, but it's not my fault. Right. <laughs> because it's not my fault that I have to get rid of them because they are impeding what I need them to do. 
you know, I need to be able to move forward in what I'm doing. Yep. And so I, but the, my coping skills were like, you know, how dare you? How, why would you do this? You know, blah, blah, you know, I'm sitting here verbally and emotionally attacking myself, which is what we do, right? We literally, when we're trying to cope with things, we're constantly having ourselves attacked. And it's like, we can't do, you can't do that. You have to work through these coping skills. Now, am I still sad that they're gone? Yeah. Will I, will it work through its process? Yes. Right. But on the flip side of that, I went in and actually did energy work on them too. So that, you know, that whole process was complete as well. So it's just one of those things where when you're coping with things, you can either continue to work through the process and figure it out. And trust me, I've done a lot of energy work on myself in the last 24 hours to work through this. Um, because I don't want to, I, once I get an animal, I'm like, you know, I want him for life. I don't want to let him go. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get you know, it. You know, but it is, it is what it is. It just is what it is. You sometimes you have to make those hard decisions and your coping skills, you lean towards them, but they may not be healthy coping skills. Right. How does so, that equate to the energy work you do? So we have, we have certain coping skills in doing energy work. How does that support the coping skills? So I talk a lot about, about cord cutting. So the first thing I did energetically wise was I cut myself from those animals, right? Cut myself from those animals. So it was like, okay, I'm disconnecting myself from you because this part of my life is over. Right. Then I went in and I downloaded and requested forgiveness for them and for me so that we could work through this process. Right. And so just that portion helped a lot yesterday um, because it was like, I was feeling, I had all this guilt and all this emotion. And so what I had to do is I had to go in and work on forgiveness. I had to work on the cord cutting. I had to work on not blaming myself and what belief systems were around that issue about trying to save everybody hang on to everything and all of that. And that's the process I'm actually working through right now with myself is when I, when I get a thought, I'll go in and I'll clear that thought through this process. Um, because it's, it's connected to, it's connected to a root of my tree. And I'm, so what this did was this triggered me to the point where I have to work through that root of that tree of that, of that tree. Right. So it's, it's connected and I can't tell you how it's totally connected because I haven't hit that far yet. Um, but it's, it's, a, it's a belief system or something that has been connected to me um, that, and I'm still, and I'm literally still just getting messages about this whole thing um, because I started getting them when we had made this decision and I was like, okay, so I'm going to have to work through this entire process. And sometimes it takes a while. I may end up going to my healer and saying, okay, <laughs> guess what? I guess I need a session. I've been being told for a while I need to go a session, but I guess I'm going to a session today because it's, I can't tell you exactly how it's connected, but energetically what I'm doing is as, as I get messages, I'm clearing those as I cut through this tree limb through this process. Right. And so it's just, it's one of those things where, because I'm so sensitive, it's just extremely difficult for me. Mm. So, you know, how do I take my energy work and help me work through this process? So I'm not eating my arm off <laughs> because I would be right there with your friend, buying all this chocolate, eating all this sugar and just stuffing it down in one setting yeah. because it's what I do. <laughs> well, that's, that's how you cope. Others have go to right. the bottle, go to, you know, what a substance, whatever right. it is. So so in energy work, what we're going to do is we're going to find out what it is that is causing you to have to turn to that coping mechanism. And then we're going to go in and we're going to release what that is. What is it that's causing you to have to turn to that coping mechanism? Let's replace it with what you need, not the programming. Because remember, we talked about your body being a program, right? Sure. So we, we want to replace the programming that is causing you to have to cope with that, you know, to have that addiction for that coping mechanism so that you don't have to turn to that because it no longer affects you that way. If that makes sense. The cord, yeah, and it does. The cord cutting 
stands out for me. I know we 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 briefly talked mm -hmm. about that in the past, but would you say because of your un totally understandable attachment here, um, mm -hmm. that that was very impactful? Yes, yes. And then the other thing that I did was I went in because last night I went over and of course four of them weren't there. And I was like, well, this is really weird. So what I did was I just started, I went in and I just kind of replaced memories. Right. So it was like, hmm. it was like, so it's like, just don't look at the fact that they're gone. They're not here anymore. Look at the, the fun times that you had while they were there. Right. So it's like, so when you go in there, it's not like you're walking in and going, oh, well, all of them are missing now. And I, you know, and I had to take them and move them. And it's, oh, yeah, you know what they did? They, they brought me joy away while they were here, but it was their time to move on. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So remember the happy times, right? And I work with clients all the time where I tell them, you don't want to, if you're dealing with grief, so I'm going to use grief as an example, or let's even use domestic abuse, because that one seems to be popping in my head. You don't want to continually remember all of the negative that was along with that, right? What you want to do is you want to move. And when you start thinking about it, you want to focus on the positive. So in domestic, in a domestic abuse, it would be when you left, you know, how much, how much you've increased, you know, if, if someone has died, I do the work to where if they start to think about the person, they don't think about the person who was sickly and dead. They're thinking about the person and who they were when they were alive, when they were feeling well, and all of those great memories that pop up so that you have a much better and easier time dealing and remembering the positive, not the negative, if that makes sense. Now, when you do this work and you've, you've found a way to cope with a situation, mm -hmm. let's say it involves, you know, a living thing. Right. Do you get to the point where when you feel that you're triggered, it rolls off your shoulder faster? Can. Okay. So if it's a deep trigger, it won't, right? So if you've done some of the work already, because like I'll hit something and I'm like, okay, that's weird. Let me just go in and I'll just I'll just go in and be like, creator, clear that for me. Whatever that is, let's clear it. Let's, you know, release it and just download me with what I need. Now, if there if it's a deeper trigger like this one is, then it takes more work. <laughs> then it takes it takes more work, right? So it it takes it takes more work to process through it and release the sadness. Because I'm not I'm sad. I'm you know I'm I'm just sad. I'm sad they're gone, and it's like but it's okay. But I'm still sad. <laughs> I so, believe me, uh, I've, you don't even have to explain it to me, Heather. I'm like my, I get my dog every other week and I don't have him this weekend. And I'm like, <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, you know what? I'll go home and we'll go for a walk. And we're going to go. No, right. we're not. You know, I, I get <laughs> no, it. We're not. And that's, and that's just a small right. piece right there. So I totally right. understand. Um, but yeah. without this energy work that I've already done, I literally probably would not even be able to sit here and talk about this because I would be a bubbling mess. And I'm not a bubbling mess because I actually have already started working through this process. And it's just something that I have to, I have to deal with, you know, um, I was the same mm -hmm. way when I had to put my Rottweiler down over a year ago, you know, and, and that was, a that one was, that was hard for me. I mean, to put him down was extremely difficult for me. And I had to do the same thing. I had to go in, I had to do the cuts. I had to do the energy work around it. And all of that, you know, because anytime we make a hard decision, we may beat ourselves up over it and we really should not be doing that. And that's where our coping skills come in again, right? So if we're telling ourselves, you know, you're a horrible person, clear counsel, delete that. You shouldn't have done that, clear counsel, delete that. We are just beating ourselves up. And then that's when we are starting to turn to our coping skills going, hey, you know, I've got to deal with this somehow. So let me go stuff chocolate down my face. Right. Or let me go drink a bottle or let me go to the bar. And so for me, anytime I have to do something like this, I part of my process is doing the energy work. And like I said, I can sit here and talk about it today. If I hadn't done that work, I I probably would not even be able to sit here and talk about it. Well, thank because, you for sharing that because it shows how fast it can possibly work. Yeah, for absolutely. Someone. Absolutely. Um, I have a deeper, a deep question. 
So okay. I asked before how when you do the the energy work and it you know rolls off your shoulder a little easier next time things present right. themselves. How do you know that you're not, and I don't even know if we can answer this. How do you know that you're not just making yourself numb to the situation, but you're truly dealing with it, processing it and moving on? I don't that know if that makes sense. The, that depends on the person, right? So I know now that I can feel when I'm, when I'm internalizing and when I'm we're rolling through the process, right? There are people who are able to process things quicker and will know that, right? And then there are people who are internalizing but feel like they're processing, but they really are not. So it depends on the mm. person. But ultimately, if the same stuff keeps popping up for you over and over and over again, right, then you haven't healed. It's not off you. It, you're, all you're doing is stuffing it down. All you're doing is stuffing it down. And if you're stuffing it down, it's going to come back up sure. in other ways. And at times that you're like, why is this even happening to me right now? Right. And, and so, and that's happened to me where I'm like, why is this even coming up right now? I've, I've healed this. I've worked on this, but there was a nugget of something that was still pending or was linked to something else that has come up that I'm like, okay, so you really have to ask yourself, are you really, have you really worked through it? Or are you just holding it inside? Mm. Are you just holding it inside? Is, is it also a process where you've done some work and when it comes back up again, it's not like it was like, for yes. example, let's say you, you, you have a, a, a challenge, you have a challenge dealing with it, coping with it. It's a hundred percent. Now you've done the work. Now you, you're down to, well, it only affects me like maybe 40% now. Yes. Does it, does it work that way where it can step down eventually? Yes. Oh, and yeah, eventually absolutely. Nothing. Okay. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you know, because everything is stages, right? So if you picture it like a tree and you're chopping limbs off, trying to get that tree, that tree down of that belief system, right? Um, I'm going to use a Chinese elm tree, for example, because I'm fighting one of those in my yard right now. So we, I had this huge one growing. I chop it all down. <laughs> it's coming back. It's got four freaking limbs on the root again, right? Mm. So that, <laughs> let's liken that to energy, to this energy work and these triggers. So you think it's all resolved. You think it's all cut down. And then all of a sudden something pops up. But it's not as big as it was, right? When I originally chopped this tree down, it was huge. And now I've just got these four little limbs that I'm dealing with, right? So what you want to do is you want to chop those little limbs off before they get huge again. So you want to go in and you want to work on this. So you want to chop these limbs off so that you're keeping it low because you're always going to have, or, you know, Chinese elm, those things expand. So their root systems are huge. So you may have chopped down this one and then all of a sudden, another one shows up over here and you're like, what in the world is going on? What is happening in my world right now, right? But ultimately, it's because they're spreading out, you're, you're moving, you're growing, you're shifting, and new things will always eventually come up and pop up that you have to deal with work through. And so energy work is a consistent process, right? It's not a one and done. It's a constant work on yourself. And you know that, Steve. You and I have talked about that and the fact it's, that it takes time, you know, it's a it's journey. A it is. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're out of time. I could keep going. This is, and I, I, I love you and appreciate you for being very transparent and honest about a real situation that is so recent, but it just yes. so, it illustrates how fast you can move forward yes. when you do the work. Absolutely. Uh, and again, it's going to take, you know, for you to, um, feel better and fully cope with this change. It's going to take some time. It's going to take some more work. Um, right. Cutting cords is so much involved here that you oh, know, yeah. we don't realize what's going on. Uh, some Absolutely. of us just think, you know, when we're no longer with someone, if for whatever circumstance uh, that, yeah, you know, I'm just sad. I miss yeah. them. Blah, 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 blah. There's, it's way more. It's way more yeah, than that. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and Absolutely. it goes back to even our lineage and, uh, you know, our history yes. and the traumas honestly, in our life. 
honestly, I think there's a past life trauma that's linked to this incident. Um, so I'm, I'm working on going back, back, back to see mm. what has happened with that. So it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out by the time it gets done. How do we find you? How do we connect with you? Somebody going through similar coping situations. What do we do? Come see me. We'll cry together. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and let me say, you know, a year ago before energy work, I would never have stood up here and even cried. I'd have just canceled today, but you know what? Crying is a great release of emotion and you really need to let that go. So let me just throw that out for the record, but come cry with me or let's share your, let's share things at uh, heatherlina.com or you can find me on Facebook and Instagram at healings with Heather. Thank you. And it's scientifically proven that crying is good. And I'll it be is. totally honest with you. Uh, if it was a couple of days ago, I probably would have crumbled with you here on camera. And I, there's been times where I've gotten very teary in, in topics, you know, every day is different. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. you know, maximize them and your coping <laughs> skills, you know, not you, just us in general. We all need to. Right, and we'll talk more about it next time. <laughs> all right. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for today. Thanks, Steve. We'll talk to you soon. We'll be right back. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcasts on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house. And there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's. It's going to be okay.